when I did my previous podcast on Taoist perspective on coronavirus, sort of justification, looking from that angle, I found out since I had the important points written out in bulleted form on a scrap paper back of a manila envelope, not a manila envelope, manila, manila colored envelopes, but small size. Huh. I'm being Tristam Shandy right now. I found that it's a constraint and hinders extemporaneous speech. So right now I have nothing and it's all completely off the dome. Uh, I want to talk about art today. <clears throat> art. So get your cheese and goblet of wine, your volute goblet of wine and champagne ready. Stop uh, that Magritian movie of Pierce Brosnan. Put that on pause and let me entertain you. Magritte, yeah. He's one of my favorite surrealist paintings, I'm um, a painter, and there are so many of his work that it still boggles me that how come I have missed some, even though I used to read one of those thin ones. Those thin, uh, they have this, uh, they have one for Rembrandt, Varmir. I forget, I forget what the, those are. Uh, the series, the series used to be called, but this thin and sort of volume and the beginning there's the introduction by the artist, of the artist bio and then there's a whole barrage of paintings by him. So that was my introduction to art when I first came to California and wanted to explore that route and I had an access to Garden Grove Regional Library right across Garden Grove High School and I spent hours on books and Vuya, do you know Vuya? He's not that well known. He's not as well known as Toulouse Lautrec. Vuya used to paint wallpaper like paintings, and they, they had some rumors about his sort of psychological relationship with his mother. He used to live with his mother, not sure he married. And then there's Whistler's mom, the arrangement in gray. I wonder what's. And I haven't delved much into Whistler. So from then on there, that's where in that library I got introduced to Sister Wendy and and then I, I did work as a dishwasher, then security guard and all I used to do in my, even though if I'm doing security, I used to come back to car and just read and read or when I was a dishwasher, I had a pocket, uh, in my pocket, I had a pocket constitution and I used to memorize the amendments and like all men are created equal, like no, my first amendment, government should not we have the right to the First Amendment rights, like, and I forget the redress or address, redress of grievances. People, people have the right to be secure in there. I, no, it's it's not there. I don't have it. I don't have it memorized. I don't have it. I don't have it down. But I think I had the search and seizure one. One day when I was driving around in Balboa near Balboa Beach, I think, and there was this winding lane, and I drove. And so suddenly I stopped in the middle of nowhere and there was this one winding lane and and then and then I started driving again I don't know why I stopped I forget I think I have to meditate I guess yeah right in the middle of nowhere in the near Balboa Beach this sort of and it's not a regular street sort of a by lane by a winding road like a ancillary road and then cop pulled me over and then I was like and the music was playing, turn it, put a, turn it on, the Kanye thing. And so I turned the music on and the cop is like, what the hell? He didn't, I mean, that was his expression. And then I'm like, officer, do you know your constitutional, do you know I have a constitutional right? Do you know that people have the right to, and then I rattled out at the Fourth Amendment. And it was fresh back then. Uh, Fourth Amendment, I think, yeah, the right to be secure in your home and searches and seizures again. Quarter troops was the Third Amendment, the, no, Third or Second or okay, anyways and the guy was like whoa and he was like hey you might have a bad experience with cop but not all cops are bad i was just curious why did you stop at the middle of nowhere and you started driving around the lane and even i couldn't keep up so the point is it's not bombastically tout my knowledge of constitution but that compliment stayed with me the fact that the, the relaxed meditative state made me a better driver like a formula one driver and he couldn't keep up and he's such a good driver he, he was like even i couldn't keep up so that's these little details like this what makes your memory the treasure house of memories in your attic rich, rich and and uh, 
and so I just have to and now if I want to talk about art I just have to rummage through my mental database because I don't even know what's hidden there like because I don't even know what I'm going to talk about right now there's this painting called art just the letters art um, sort of cartoonish vibrant way not sure if it's Liechtenstein I don't think it's Liechtenstein or Liechtenstein how do you what's the difference between the country and the artist about the pronunciation Liechtenstein was a pop artist surreal the Dali and 15 minutes there was a movie 15 minutes and the Warhol the Campbell and each Campbell were hand-painted and each are different actually Andy Warhol was probably gay and I found that one out when a Basquiat document I mean a paint um, movie with that chick was it Claire Danes I think it was Claire Danes she was also with uh, Jackie Chan in the Jackie Chan movie I remember the dance scene and Jackie Chan was probably a spy or something I think it's Claire Danes but um yeah basketball and he, he was that was that was a good film but i just didn't finish it and he was so ghetto and edgy and you know druggy and this hip liberal this total counterculture rebel this badass almost he had that he was if i were to imagine banksy i used to, I, I'm, I'm gonna conjure an image somehow similar akin to basquiat basquiat lariat what's a lariat Liechtenstein, I'm sure he left a whole body of work um, of, of which we only know the more the popular ones the cartoonish ones the and the womb is that the womb or Ram or womb the, the, What are the titles of the Liechtenstein Lich, Liechtenstein painting Roy Liechtenstein? I will not create bad art. That's another conceptual slash pop art well more of a conceptual art and then there is uh, Distill, Dewitt, Dissol, probably I got them all jangled, mam, mam, like jangled up or like mangled up in my treasury. And that's what I realized when I do all these podcasts, the beauty that is so much information is just buried in my sleep, in my psyche that I, didn't, I don't even know. Because I started reading, like seriously studying from library when I was 18, 1998, 99, circa 1999. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, 2000 rather. So it's been 20 years, 20 years of learning, and so that's lifelong learning. And spam is what spam? No, was spam ever featured in art? On art? I doubt it. There was the Italian guy, mirror the shit. He he put a shit in a can and pop art, um, and then. The whole data is moving I, I even took art history in uh, in college so that helped but I do have my even in art history I have a penchant for modern art and contemporary art and installation art and conceptual art and rather than uh, and speaking of who was the lady who did that astronomy thing when who blew up the cottage who did that the woods like I think that like he she collected ten thousand woods. Forget her name. These are the art that I really like. We're simple, but it takes mind blowingly complex. Like execute like a, it's almost like a bank robbery. So much execution needed. You know though she collected ten thousand woods, and uh, like different types of woods and and uh, she made this whole trunk like thing. I forget her name. I'm sure if I have to rummage, I can find it. But it's. It's a common name, Patterson? No, Patterson. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my deficiency are the Renaissance art. Tintoretto, I mean, not Cezanne, Tintoretto. Like, I don't know nothing about Tintoretto, but I read a book by Shoto Jitrai called Tintoretto's Jishu, Jesus of Tintoretto. Van Wyck, the Venus of Van Wyck is pretty deep, as is uh, the Bruegel, the Elder. I wonder, actually, is it Bruegel the, Bruegel the Elder, and who was the, I mean, then, why is this, the distinction is made? I mean, the Flemish artist. The Tower of Babel is probably by Bruegel, by, by Bruegel, uh, Bruegel, and Vermeer, girl with the pearl earring, and the whole, he was, this is the Delft, the yeah, Delft, he was, he was in Delft, Delft. Dutch was he Dutch? Yeah, 
Rembrandt is also probably Dutch. So what are the Dutch contribution to painting? Van Eyck probably. Van Gogh was Van Gogh. No, Van Gogh is yeah, he's Dutch. The Dutch produced a whole bunch, whole whole good batch of famous painters, I guess. Starry Night, Starry Night. And everyone knows about his his deal with Gauguin, his uh, you know, when Gauguin came and the whole chair and cut his ear and the bandaged ear. Mademoiselle d'Avignon is probably well known of Picasso's pa pa uh, painting and and as well as Guernica and d'Avignon is I like it just because of the sake it's because of his edginess, literal edginess is on the fragmented shattered reality plastered all over the canvas which is akin to the same same feeling is as Kandinsky on his on his on on his canvas or rather Pollock and watch the movie Paul uh, Paul Harris in uh, I mean Ed Harris in Pollock and those are the only two good movies that are made like real authentic and I, I may, previously I mentioned of Frida Kahlo and with his relationship with Diego Rivera with her relationship with Diego Rivera and Diego Rivera was a complete asshole I mean now that I if you watch the movie he was he treated her like a shit and then the Mondiaglini that's another movie the biopic I made not really biopic not a sort of Mondiaglini Mondrian Mondrian most people see that abstract that abstract you know just stoic puri puritan conceptual constraint minimal grid of lines with painting like a, like a Rubik's cube thingy but it's actually an evolution from tree and and when you see every time you see the sketchbooks of Picasso or other painters like he could draw like Raphael as he said when he was by the time he was three or four <laughs> well not probably that early but even people like Dali like they could literally copy in like Xerox I'm not sure if this story is entirely true so excuse me for the veracity but could be apocryphal the fact that Picasso would draw a rabbit's foot over and over and over again copy it like Xerox and apparently he trained he was trained to do that at before it became drawing realistically became second nature to him the blue period that is that's where still he holds those he still he hasn't become completely abstract and cubist and I think was it I wonder what would be the difference after he started doing opium and after he started before and after and opium was fashionable laudanum I actually brought it up in a class art history class another memory of my art history class is teacher was asking who was the guy he started talked about Leonardo and another Leonardo's uh, I think Leonardo's Leonardo's uh, master I think Again, I forget. I'm sorry, my memory failing right now. And I talk, and I said probably it was Vasari, and she was impressed. I could tell, but even though I was wrong, because it wasn't Vasari. Vasari Roy wrote the lives of Renaissance painters, and it was actually Verrocchio, Verrocchio, and Petrocchio. I still remember it from his kids' biography I read of Leonardo. I also read the Isaac Walson's one, Walson, Walson, Isaac Walson. The really Leonardo, uh, Perocchio, Piro, Piro, Perocchio, I think, not Perocchio, no. Perocchio, Perocchio, yeah. I'm conflating him with probably Petrocchio of Taming of the Shoe. But the point being, see, in during those times, those apprentices, they could, they were literally, they're like the Olympic swimmers. They were each like, it's not like Leonardo did something amazing which no one else could do, and that's why he's all famous. No. If he, if I mean, he still had to rise up the ranks, the ladder. He had to come, came, you know. Uh, started with nothing. I mean, the Drake song like came from nothing, and now I'm here. That whole that mentality. I mean, because his rival, those Pirocchio, Petrosh, I'm sorry, the one with such P, he could draw as good as Leonardo, but it's the subtle dif differences, the sfumato, and tempura, and the execution of tempura, tempera, tempura, <laughs> tempera. Temp okay, and that's uh, Mufato actually, and he said M Mona Lisa is actually tonal art. Anyone can copy the shape, but sketch it. But the tone, you have to do it. This tone is it's entirely tonal art. I mean, it's impossible to like even sketch it because it's this based on 
just tone. So you have to have a supreme sense of tone. And the subject matter doesn't matter. And the earlier ones, there were the papyrus, pap papyrus, those before pre Van Weke ones where I forgot the names. Not Giotto, even before Giotto or like Guy. I mean, Giotto reminds me of Gaia and he reminds me of Vera Cru Velasquez and uh, Makinas. Makinas or the, the Makinas? Was it Makinas? The doll, doll. Um, yeah, should be Makinas. Les Makinas, like Normanian, I don't know. My Spanish is not that good. Um, Michelangelo, I watched, I looked at Creation of Adams uh, live. Chakush, as we say in Bengali, in, in, in Vatican City. And before, and at, during that time, I couldn't, I knew it was something, but I didn't even know it was Creation of Adams, even though I bought a t shirt. But I knew that it's something. And it's also, you know, when you're touring, you don't have that much time. And Moses. Michelangelo, it's there is a there is a story that after he did the Moses thingy, I think it was Moses with the horn, or not David. I think it was Moses, and he used to get into a fight, fist fight with his other people, and some rival used to, you know, you started claiming that it was he who did it, and then Michelangelo had this such big ego that he came back and he chiseled his engraved his name in the in the in the one of those statues. I think it was Moses one. Or probably, I don't know, not David. I'm not sure it was David. But the point, and that was when I started to realize even these great men who we idol, idol, idolized, we put apotheosized, that's my word, um, who put into such high exalted pedestal, even they had human flaws. They had ego, they were drunk. And that was those, when I was growing up as a teenager, 16, 17, 18, uh, that was a sh like a shocking thing. Also with another mathematician, I'm not going to name him, and he, he, he has a Wikipedia entry and he has a paradox named after him. His star, name starts with Y. I once, I, 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 as being an overzealous student, I once emailed him and he's like, be grateful your teacher wants to see you. And it, because he had a very stiff, uh, stiff lipped, like a pity tone, like I'm the, the professor, how dare you write, to, like email me. And so fucking, basically was a snobbish fucking anal asshole. And then I wrote, and me being this meek guy, I wrote, I'm sorry if I offended your politas, but I, I thought you are being a philosopher, mathematical philosopher, you'd be more interested in truth. And that's when my, the seeds of anathema against this, this absolute distrust of in, this academia and this denigration of it started being sown because most people are not interested in, in real, the, Philosophy actually means love of wisdom. How many are really lovers of wisdom or lovers of real education or even art? Art is being prostitutized like anything you be it. Sots be and then we have this grinding, struggling artist and who, who wants to get their name up there. It's like you have to make it in life and to have painting sold. And I understand you have to pay your bills, but at one point you don't do art for the sake of uh, doing art. That's one of my criticisms of Stephen King, even though I didn't read any of it, a single word of his book, just flip through his books to uh, editing is divine, really to write is heavenly or editing is divine, some shit like that. He said, you know, if you're just, I, I'm, I get it, if that's your way, your way as in the J Chinese, Japanese way, but if you think that if you want to make it a generic, bland fit for the reader's average soccer moms and you're prostitutizing your soul, just to fit, edit, over edit, over polish, make it all perfect, cross the T's and dot the tittles of the I. It just shows you probably are not as, that's why I hate, actually nowadays I hate uh, writing, publishing anything on Amazon because the whole process is a fucking bitch. It's a chore. The whole compile, compiling, the whole looking for errors, debugging, and then looking for errors at every single page, formatting, all those shit. Because ultimately that just sucks the inspiration out of just the joy I act of creating that childhood love of creating and and uh, you might think but that is life well that's why and it reflects when things are forced it reflects on your art Sh movies get trashed movies get shitted on lame based S jokes get stale because they're so overproduced and over refined and over edited and people are performing rehearsing so many times and like a routine it's literally called routine the bits 
and you can tell and it's forced and people pretend and play along with it and I should really be talking about fucking art, Ghent of Altarpiece. In Smart History, they ta- there's a good feature, feature it on Ghent of Alter- Ghent Altarpiece and it's amazing, insane, so much details encoded in there. And what is art? A Japanese or Chinese temple, wooden, Japanese wooden temple is considered art. The stupas in Asia is considered art. Um, what is art? Anything can be considered art, just like Marcel Duchamp proved with his toilet bowl thing, the urinal. And um, so the reason why I mention what is art is because... Uh, I forget I lost the thread, I went off tangent. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think, okay, then there's land art, but uh, some, uh, like, temp- we don't usually consider like those Japanese wooden temple uh, to be art, or those, um, yeah, even those mandirs or those those uh, temples in India or in um, Borobudur or those Borobudur ones in Indonesia or in um, wherever but I, again it will come back never mind I was trying to think of some other thing okay can plants be art one of the one one um, um, clockwork the clockwork I wanted to invent and I had this conceptual idea where these ants move in circular fashion and there is this ladybug beetle or whatever that moves in another circular fashion and they each move at different rate because they're all pheromones and whatever ants pick up the nectar or whatever sugar trail of sugar and they just follow that sugar and by the time they complete a revolution ants that's one second and by the time their bug completes it and this fucking copyright I don't fucking steal my idea Fucking, I'm dying here already of big corporations stealing people's idea, advertising agents and whatnot, so fuck you. Yeah, I'm pissed. Why shouldn't I be pissed? You preach and lecture us to give credit and not to pleasurize, but you don't have the decency to acknowledge when you blatantly steal from other artists, be it me or other people, from the small people. You like stealing candy from the babies. And that's another disgusting thing. We're so worried about publish or perish. Everyone, the whoever publishes first, the greatest credit, this Leibniz, Newton, calculus, food, and, and it, this public, this credit, this we're so eager for fame and, and whatnot. And we're more wor- like, worried about giving, giving uh, the due credit and getting the due credit that that becomes more important than the act of creation itself. Be, and... And that's why I shun the whole, right, nowadays, that's why I embrace self-publishing, because I don't want to, you know, by the time I write something and they edit it and the raw thing, they edit it and they trim it and pair it, it's it's completely different beast altogether by the time it comes out, because it has to package to appease people, the Vox Populi, and it all based on their taste, and we'll bend down and screw ourselves over just to fit the mold and appease others and that's my cynical disgust towards the current culture and my and so and people say would it be movies that that's the whole process you have to play with stick uh, stick with the stick to the script and fill in the details like it's just pain by numbers that one movies boilerplate movies or even artists this kish that's why you don't have you have kish artists and art and whatnot some kish art can be good and some are utterly hor- utterly horrible like the dollar art i mean you're just you're making a washington's portrait with washington's bill yeah why not you're just overdoing it even if you were to take fucking one single dollar bill and make thousand cranes of origami that would be more interesting than just being making fractal mathematical art out of it that's another thing they call it art is not something artsy art doesn't have to be artsy that's what a mistake art can be subtle clever just like i weigh uh, like that I, I, I still can't remember that guy's name who used to do this dates there's when the moon landing did the important dates and he used to mail them i think this conceptual art mariana abramovich 
Even Shia LaBeouf, is he a real artist? Who knows? Only time will tell. And as they say, only time will tell whose work will really endure and not. Oh, I was gonna talk about Marshall Islands one. The Marshall, the Marshall Islands sail, those knotted, those knots, those, those, what do you call those sticks and stones, those navigational charts, that's considered art. Smart history, a smart art history also has a segment on that. So, th so this, so I love, and those people are amazing. When, and th th those people, you can tell those, those rock stars, I forget, I don't know the name, the lady and the gentleman, they have such a beautiful timber voice and the narration and their extreme depth of knowledge is mind blowing. So they say that in the James Bond and novel, like he used to listen to anyone who is expert of anything, whether it be gold or anything. I have that towards other people like if you and that when i'm bitter i'm bitter because of the fakeness if an authentic people is truly monstrous love for this love of love of studying it if they want to study just purely purely out of the sake of love of it i'll give you respect i'll take i doff my hat off to you but the moment i, s I detect a single sleaze that you want to the ulterior motive of money and selfishness it's greed it's not about money anymore so it's about greed yeah everyone wants to make a living and survive so before i go off tangent again on rant let me bring it down what about leisure leisure found on leisure rothko people that apparently cried when he, they used to see his painting di chiroko di chiroko giorgio di chiroko and there are some in, extreme insane beasts on facebook who 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 were like art history major or whatever and you can tell the, the amount of knowledge they have because they because all those different paintings they post less and they can riff on it because of and uh i don't want to put anyone blast nikki is one i don't want to tell her last name but it's funny how i remember that these odd details and tidbits and one of my favorite art was this chinese artist smart art history also has a segment on it um, this Chinese, this, he invented some Chinese looking letters and he like basically wrote like scrolls on it and there is this whole room filled with his, with all those scrolls like I think 10,000 letters or characters or script, scripts of Chinese looking symbols and that's an interesting concept. Went to LACMA when I was there doing art history, we had to go to this museum, there's one on and hammer museum but there was a different one the, the far away one i forget with statues outside that's a good beautiful posh museum like an elite level museum and but i didn't go to gettys i went to bowers is one of my favorite it has to be bowers california artists know nothing about them probably there's this whole nun image that i saw in bowers this strain of nun procession of nuns There's Paul Clay, this naive realism, sort of. Is that naive realism or was it uh, Henry, Henry, not Poincaré, but Henry, Henry, what's his name, Henry, uh, Henry something, Henry, Henry Rousseau. He was a self-taught artist. Installation art, um, Hearst, is that Hearst? Hearst, the shark tank, the shark thingy, the one formal, formaldehyde. Well, the shark, shark is bisected in, in, uh, in halves and yeah, the AGRs like that, that really sh sort of jars you and moves you. I think that what really, that's what really art is. I remember the first day of our art history class, our professor had a, this giant lady with her vagina of, you know, freaking open and there's this, and this painting, <laughs> not real, and the fucking, and there's this procession of human people there's images uh, and um they're all entering her vagina and and uh and uh and uh, i think i don't know if that was, the, the lady was in the representation of museum or anything but our point was if things like this shock you probably you shouldn't be in this class because you should develop certain maturity to to be the adult in the room and 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 just be adult yeah because i mean but one thing I would argue, you know, they talk about why certain artists are accepted by some those cliche, those angel on the wings, cupids, why they aren't. 
So they had this argument and this guy was talking about Pharrell, I think. Pharrell's happy how we're going back to the glory days. Art should be like art. And I would argue maybe he has some merit. Who is to say just because you're embraced as an artist after 500 years, just because society embraces an artist, who is to say like De Kooning is better than those Cupid Angel and the Cupid romantic romantic classical artists or like or even Claude Lorraine or for that matter. Who else who are, who else are the romantic painters other than Claude Lorraine? They're the American American ones, Winchester. Um Winchester and uh is uh, Grant Wood obviously is American. What about Edward Hopper? Edward Hopper is probably American. Hockney is American, I think. Hockney is the splash in the in the pond image. That is kind of like equivalent high cue of the whole plop, the frog in the pond. I mean, that's my stretch, but my that's me stretching it. So the, here's so that's my gander on art. Not sure because I don't think, and I can just there are all these, so many artists like some I don't even know. I used to have that one thousand one paintings to see before you die book. So and I noticeably I will have more information about art than books because I don't like literature and it's the slow reading and. Because you know, on this days of information age where you can extract this bulk of information at a single glance from whether scrolling uh, websites and just absorbing from YouTube documentaries, I, I lost that ability to read books actually. Be it Kim, Rudyard Kipling's Kim or whatever, no matter how juicy it is, it's just, it's just, I just know, I can't, unless I mostly read nonfiction. So art obviously I have better grip than books. And uh, pop art, conceptual art, Apple people was did Marguerite's Apple in, inspire Apple? Who knows? I don't think so. No, I think they made a like a parody of it, I guess. So that's why I talked about it. Uh, Botticelli, I, Raphael. I guess the first time I learned of artists was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and we, maybe millennials of my age probably that's where they got their introduction from Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael and who was the other guy Donatello and I think I'll tell you a story and I will I'll, I'll actually reveal a magic trick suppose you ask someone you here's your room and you and you ask someone uh, to name uh, any car from 52 deck of cards and he names ace of hearts for example what you do is you're wearing a wig you take off your wig and lo and behold under your wig is a fucking ace of hearts i guess so the and how you do that it's a dave and uh, I think David Blaine uses the same concept except he keeps going until the force card matches the found card. So basically what you do is you, and I got it from PC Sharker book from Anandamela magazine first. You hide f cards in 52 different location. So whatever they, and I'm giving secret away, secret so I can't believe it. So whatever they ask, you just, if there were ace of, I don't know, nine of hearts. You, you would flip it opposite and upside down in a deck of cards and you'll show it to him but the challenge is you have to think of 52 different things because suppose you do it you pull out your wig and you should reveal the card he'll be like okay maybe you have another card in your pocket or in your in your boot or whatever so you have to think of 52 unique places and locations or concepts and that's where my segue starts because each concept is basically one sort of dimension like prime numbers each number you cannot int you cannot find or intuit or like yeah you can intuit but you cannot construct a prime number or probably you can who knows yeah i mean if you're a higher mathematician more power to you and you'll probably be the best guide on, on this my point being uh, it's like each prime number is like a different dimension different level so to speak and i want like electron the electrons I don't know what I'm talking about regarding electrons, but so 52 unique locations sort of, sort of like 50 different. And that's where the originality and creativity is 
and I'm sure there's, I'm not, I'm sure, like, there is an archive paper about Riemann hypothesis where they talk about prime numbers and creativity, and they want to tie in prime numbers and the concept of creativity, and so the idea of creativity is you create something, un unthought of thoughts, as Magritte would say, and as there was a painter where he's painting, uh, attempting the impossible, where he's painting a, so you have to just Google attempting the impossible by Magritte. My point being, an artist creates an impossible, unthought of thoughts, original, that's what originally really is, but that still has a unique pattern. And even though you, um, when, when you, when you like, um, what's his name? Sheila. So, so Klimt, when the other one with Klimt, Klimt, uh, I don't know if he's contemporary. Um, so Sheila, so all he did was the same type of painting, but he did a variation of it. And you, you oftentimes artists create their own unique style, individual style, and it's just a variation of the same concept. So, but still, in order to create that unique, the, 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 the original thing from, of which you want to create a variation of, that original thing has, has, to, has to be a unique concept even though it's not a conceptual art and that's what gives them art and merit like yeah there's a meme Rauschenberg yeah uh, like a like a blank canvas of Rauschenberger Rauschenberg and the guy says yeah even I could have done it but you fucking didn't that's the whole point because no one fucking did it and that's why it's he was the first one rather so so what I'm talking about um is uh so that's the whole, that's what creativity really is. Creativity is not, oh, I take my crayon, I draw this beautiful vase, and that's creative. No, it's not. And it's not, it's, it could be artsy, it's not art. It's, it's, it's not art in the sense of art. What's so unique about it? And just because you draw some unique shape doesn't necessarily make it art. The concept is not another dimension or sort of location. People, because just like the magic tree, people would say anyone else could have drawn a unique shape. So what's so unique about the essence of it, the act, act uh, core of this, this, th what really makes it really like this truly unique in the sense of, and so I think there's always, just like the fact, think of Russell's paradox, Russell's set theory, where um, you, you take one art, you take another word, art, you take another art, and then you draw this ca uh, canvas where you features all the arts of the world and you come to a blank space where you realize it's missing that art itself, the one you're drawing right now. So the point being there always will be some, you can always generate, it's kind of like throwing dice, except you're throwing this random configuration of particles and which will sort of, it's like imagine you take a bunch of Skittles and you just throw them and it forms a random image. So. You can all this and nature is so infinite and this cornucopia of this that we have this and not even just one domain like painting or a sketchbook or it will literally the whole art a whole world is like is a is a fodder for art like be it any other domain land art or whatever so there would should be infinite infinite resource infinite imagine like that's the power of imagination this actually literally cornucopia of fodder just to create art and art will never go obsolete you, i mean you'll never humanity will never come to a point they'll be like hmm i think we've exhausted all the arts in the world what should we draw next there's always some um, some things that you can you can come up with the, the beauty of art is that and it, that that's just by law and and i love the concept and obviously papers like those those archive papers you know pur uh, purporting to solve riemann hypothesis obviously they're gonna get shitted on because all these prickly prick nose those uppity skeptical anal nutritive rigorous people those prickly pair people they're obviously those oh it's so fluffy what is the, show me the work it's all hand waving that's not the fucking point, you fucking moron. The more point is, it's an original thought and it deserves to be talked about. And whoever that, I think it was an Asian guy, two Asian guy or whatever. And um, that's why, the, that's the, and even academia has been so dishonest and disingenuous. They don't wanna, they don't give a fuck if you solve Riemann hypothesis. They wanna see if Terence Tao can solve Riemann hypothesis because it's from argument from authority. Here they are, they wanna, they wanna be this where they should be questioning the foundation logic and mathematics but they themselves preach to be the authority figures and whatever they say is true and who who gives you the right to be a referee if mathematics is supposed to be the ultimate search for truth and perfection i mean to ultimate vertical truth if logic who the fuck are you to decide if my paper is the hell's any water or not you can say okay but we have to do for the sake of 
our um, journal of symbolic logic or whatnot or anal not anal annals of mathematics but again you're the gatekeeper who's who who is the, who guards the gatekeeper who's to say if i if i were to prove two equals two plus two is not four who the hell are you to say but then you say but we need it for it has to meet the criteria for our magazine but obviously that that it may that it means mathematics is man-made if you are cherry picking and picking and under this pretense that there's some truth to it with a capital t vertical truth platonic ideal truth of you're being, you're just you don't care about truth so similarly before i before i start rambling ranting again art um so yeah i think that's a great concept because if you assume that prime numbers are uncountable or countable or like the basically that you can either infinite variations of i mean infinite pri prime numbers are infinite rather the infinitely many primes to speak to be a correct quote unquote correct speak of mathematics uh, then by virtue of that definition since each math uh, prime numbers are unique and they can all they can go off forever by that that's the underpinning behind created the creativity actually because that means that by virtue of that creativity should also never run out we should never we never had an impasse where we'd be like hmm if you were to create some virtual reality like soul where you can interact with soul have an nde who knows maybe that's an art guitars guitars of some i don't know famous guitar guitarist like beatles or whoever are probably considered in um you know mets i mean they are mets mets have so many different uh different sections pottery ceramic ceramic art uh even in ceramic there is a uh, who are Vela, uh, veracruz there is aztec maya and then and then member and um, member vessels and and uh basket and anasazi uh, uh, then there's the whole non-western art the african art and so and then it suddenly starts thinning out then what really is art who 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 dictates well, who are the tastemakers rather just because it sells for 80 billion dollars a sotsby or whatever sotheby's uh, or whatever at auction does that give them any is art has lost is art no longer for gracia art like, you know, Ars Gracia, Gracia Ars or whatever, the MGM logo. Probably it's not anymore. It's all about money. People have sold their soul in search of greed. And there is uh, Stella, Frank Stella. There is this Judd, I think, Judd, the David Judd, the, with those, those ladder-like protrusions from the wall. There is Magritte. There is... Uh, I think I covered pretty much. I think I'm exhausted of my resources, I guess. And it's just now that I've activated it, when I'll be taking a shower or doing other things, they'll come back to me, they'll rush to me. But I think I'll end on that note. It's difficult to ramble, riff on, on a single, singular topic for two hours. I mean, I mean, imagine you had to talk for nuclear prol proliferation for like fucking three hours and some a topic you know nothing about. And the art, I actually do know something like a lot about, but to speak extemporaneously, extemporaneously for an hour, it's, wow, it's tough. But I hope if I keep doing it for a while, this catharsis, I'll get better at my game. Stamp can be art. Each stamp, like, that's it's, that itself, but since it's mass produced, it's not considered art books can be art i even made a book art installation art which is filled with blank pages and it has glossy white cover to me that's an art is bible an art gutenberg bible gutenberg bible costs more than a boeing 747 apparently what is art clepsidra if you find a clepsidra or um those antiqu antiquera those greek mechanisms Will computer be considered art somewhere down the like 300 years from now that your desktop PC, even the TV that we threw away, that we are forced by law to throw away our TVs. Remember those junk, those clunky TVs? Probably they're in museum shelves right now. 
there's video art pop art video art video arts are can be also amazing and right now uh, the modern uh, the installation conceptual art this is like it's the whole can of worms because there's so many contemporary artists like even everyone like before it was this chosen few of the guild who were chosen by the ludovico or whoever lorenzo to paint and nowadays anyone can probably call himself an artist like oh and that's okay but that was originally the idea behind youtube that you remember times magazine you are the you you are the man of the year and then slowly it got diluted because corporations seeped and i don't want to talk about youtube i don't want to rant again over that. i hate that about it, how youtube even lost its soul because everyone could have and no one it's not a level level playing field i mean and i'm not bitching i'm not bickering right now i don't even care about my videos but imagine the other ones who are salty who gives dislikes to um, youtube's rewind and there's and palpably and uh justifiably so i mean you're marginalizing a whole bunch of people who are non-elites or who, are, who doesn't have money to go hey everyone and then there's this cook there's the sound there's artificial sound there's this 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 trash basically of videos where they pretend this this they get hire a studio spend five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars just to make it all this so that's another thing so even if you are to produce some if you were to produce some youtube art and by that i mean performance art uh, even david blaine i think he's an amazing performance artist so if you were to produce one just do it don't do it for to be viral or to just do it that even knowing no one will read it or watch it or listen to it and just based on even so now now that covid has jolted us and people are stuck home so just forget about the money and fame and just do for the love of doing it and even though life does not reward you who cares you lived your life nadine stereo poem i wish i collected more daisies at the end aztec art indian art bungalow can bungalow be an art Sri Lankan, who are the some Sri Lankan artists? And then those Vishnu mythology, those are considered art. Mughal painting, their scrolls, they're considered art. Anything can be considered art, but question then becomes who dictates that? Who dictates who are the who deserves Nobel Prize or who whose works are the best sellers? Is it money? Is it the number of the books, the amount of books sold, popularity? What is popularity? Even if a single person is not I remember I was once playing Rap God in Bangladesh in a market, sort of this, you know, street market, open air market, bazaar like thing. And no one, and here I was jamming and no one could give a good care less. No one could give a fuck because, because those are the one, the right demographics. And most people travel broadens horizons and so such as to you. That's when you go out of the, your, the shell of America or Western cocoon that you live in. You realize how different people are than you and what we think is the big deal. Like, you know, NBA, Lakers, Kobe dying. So other parts of the world, no one gives a rat's ass. What we, what the media churns out and it's in a grand echo chamber of reality TV in this America that has become, we think that's what it is. There's a sort of pejorative, pro, uh, like a story, like a, a proverb, not a proverb, like a saying in, in our country that once a rat comes out of the hole, that's when he finds the real world. It's pejorative, but... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's why travel broadens horizon, I mean... I mean, yeah, the wooden art stuff or the Dogon masks. I mean, anything can be considered art. Probably if a UFO, if someone found some UFO in Roswell or something like. So ultimately, and does it really matter if you're recognized or not, if you're viral or not? I mean, I, I think Mr. Beast, to some extent, can, can be considered an artist, even though he is this, this this typical typecast of youtube star because what he's doing he's really has some creative because he's kind of you know what he talks about who the hell who the hell cares about uh, saying logan's paul name like thousands of you thousand times or not who the you know he'll be no one will give a fuck rass ass for ten thousand years from now who the fuck logan paul is 
and I'm, I apologize if I'm shitting on Logan Paul without seeing any of his videos. My point being is like, just because something is hip and hyped up and trendy doesn't mean it'll endure in the longer run. Whatever happened to Pokemon craze, whatever happened to Tamaguchi, whatever happened to all this craze, the waves of craze that the media and the lead, the gatekeepers and the echo chamber of this, this, we are surrounded by this cocoon, this bubble of this, what we perceive as to be the real reality, whether, whereas you don't know what the real reality is. There's the Russian posters are considered art, you know, Belarusian posters or whatnot. So yeah just it's when you go to the library you look or you find and library doesn't discriminate i mean yeah what i mean by that is you when you go to you go to library of congress there are miles and i never been there but li miles and miles of books and even if in uci library and all the each book like even the especially if you go to the uci ayala ayala not ayala science like the other one the, the for the non-science library you realize there's so many books and in each his holds his merit um each are like different like at this it's like a, if each were like candies and chocolates each books are different and and each and imagine somewhere in that there's this drop of uh, in the ocean there's this one drop of ocean and that single drop is probably could be a giant encyclopedia of like this uh, ceramic art of the i don't know fucking hopi or something i don't know and um so that's just one and people has devoted their whole lifestyle on probably like i don't know sand painting or something or probably uh on de kooning or or whoever so and that's that's what it is ultimately like you you're just a drop of drop in the ocean yeah i mean i mean, I mean uh, yeah there is the sufi concept you are the ocean but what i mean by dropping the ocean just in this whole grand scheme of things there's 15 billion years or whatever the how old the universe is it doesn't matter and then in jim carrey's right to some extent that uh it doesn't matter at the end nothing matters what matters what eventually matters is what makes you happy what makes what that's what's really important in life as we are finding out the hard way right now so i think i spoke more about non-art than art and but I just had to get get it out of my system. But I wish I could talk at length more. Cause and I didn't think I touched the statues though. Those uh, Henry, not Henry. Uh, what's his name? The the statues of Henry Moore, Henry Moore sculptures, Rodin and and um, the, the 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 Colombian one in uh, in Medellin. And the, but. And so I'm not showing off, I'm more like rummaging my my brain to f extract some gems like a pearl driver of of Maldives. And so far probably the only thing that's of interest to me is probably I guess <laughs> I guess art. The one with art, the one I started with, where the it's just written art. And then there's of course Magritte Cecinepa and Peep. And some some art where they're just right and or it could have been this is not an art. Like Smoothian's book, this book needs no title. I think I've rambled enough today, so that's about it. Probably covered all the major ones. Probably not the. Hmm. Yeah, there's a dearth of women artists. I think. I mean, I mean, the who was the one who used to do those circles? Those those or or, not Apollon not Apollonian circles. Those um, ah, not Popov. Popov is a who's who's popov popov was a photo no not photographer i'm trying to think of the lady who used to draw these circles this and there was another one who was called ball and taitlin and another one who who got inspired by the quilt pattern of russia russian peasants and farmers and then there's malevich but Kazimir malevich with the russian icon in the corner of your room and if anything you take out of it, I hope you'll be inspired at least. I don't want to impress you as this. I don't want to impress you, but impress upon you the fact if I can naturally ramble on about so much at length about a simple subject like art, imagine the knowledge that you have in your field and field of expertise. You don't even know what you know. 
and maybe you can start doing podcasts like me and like talk about riff about your the life you led just like the human library experience the human experiences or the human library where you can check out human so yeah we don't know unless we for instance there's a polish show called uh, this genius genius i think genius brain the brain brain and uh, where and where they each mentats amaze the audience with their abilities whether it be solving rubik's cube memorizing t- chunks of data or like discerning tones or just having a perfect pitch one lady her expertise was oscars the oscar dresses because that was her interest and she is an expert on identifying any oscar dresses from any any year right so and there are others who the soccer the soccer configuration of plays then the, the, he, the, he got that down so we all have just because we're not on joe rogan or just because we don't have our tv show reality tv show on fucking netflix doesn't mean there aren't people out there you're listening joe rogan <laughs> i'm not calling you out bro i'm just making fun of you just because and there are people you know this whole self help industry psychology gurus who who still adhere to the notion you have to matter somehow your life is not important it's not worthy of even you don't d- deserve to breathe the air and and have this entitlement like what have you contributed and and i mean get a job and all those bullshit that somehow only way you can matter is by contributing but and that's the reason why I balance it out by by vehemently uh raving against this notion that one must mount to something or must matter and only way one can matter is because fuck you people like me have reached a varied varied uh, life and rich life and even though if we don't amount to anything or we don't get the recognition or whatever bullshit recognition doesn't mean our life doesn't mean anything bam bitches mic drop I have to do a literal mic drop, literal mic drop, because um, because it takes time to save the whole shit I I recorded, and there is this back of like b- b- underlying fear at the back of my mind in my hinter hinter gedenkan. What if it gets lost? Because the Microsoft Photos fucking sucks. It's the worst thing Windows could uh, concoct. But again. Maybe I should rant all the time. That's why. I, maybe I should be like Jim Cramer, be all raving lunatic, <laughs> or the raging, raging, or like Pierre Bernard and his recliner of rage. 